G'day folks, this will be our sixth and final video tutorial on the kinetics topic. And in this video tutorial we're going to talk about the Arrhenius equation. And one form of the Arrhenius equation appears on the screen here. And you can see that uh, we have a connection between the rate constant K, so the kinetics of the reaction, as given by this rate constant K, and the activation energy. This is not something that we've seen in the rate laws or the integrated rate laws. I've defined here each of these variables in the equation. You can see that k is the rate constant. That's the same rate constant that we see in the rate laws and the integrated rate laws. And we have a few other things, some which you may recognize, others which might not be so familiar to you. R is the molar gas constant. You've used the ideal gas equation before, and this is the same constant that we use there. E with a little a is the activation energy, in other words, the energy required for uh, a reaction to proceed. T is the temperature in Kelvin. And the one thing you probably haven't seen here before is capital A, and that's the frequency factor. Frequency factors are constant. And sometimes we can use this frequency factor to our advantage. And if you rearrange the Arrhenius equation, it can look uh, the way it does there. So if you like, since A is a constant, we could set up the following equality. And I'll just sketch this down for you guys. Um, if we actually have two different rate constants at two different temperatures, now we know that's true, that is you change the temperature for a reaction, the rate constant changes, we can set up the following equality. So we'll call the first rate constant K1. So that's going to be at temperature 1. And I'm going to sub that into our equation here. We get something which looks like that at temperature 1. And we can say that that is going to be equal to K2 at temperature 2. Yep. So the activation energy does not change when you change the temperature of a situation. So perhaps if we just really quickly rearrange this. Whoops, what happened there? Come back. I really like this blue, this sort of, I don't know, what do you call this sort of blue? It doesn't matter. I like that blue. It's cool. Uh, just rearrange this guy a little bit. What have we got? If we put K2 over K1, for example we would get the following expression. And depending on what sort of problem it is you're trying to solve, you can rearrange this in all sorts of ways. Um, something like that. Ultimately, it boils down to uh, a nice form. If we were to take, say, the log, natural log of both sides of that equation there, you actually get an expression which ends up looking pretty neat. More to the point, what we've actually isolated here is a version of the Arrhenius equation which doesn't contain the frequency factor at all. In other words, if you have the rate constant uh, at one temperature, if I give you another temperature and I know the activation energy, then you should be able to give me the rate constant at that temperature as well, using that equation there, even though you don't have a handle on the frequency factor. All the same, you could work it out if you really wanted to. And what better way to think about that than to just do a quick sample problem? And in this case here, we've got a reaction where two moles of nitrogen dioxide dissociates into two moles of nitrogen oxide and one mole of oxygen gas. And we're given some information. So this reaction has a rate constant of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds to the minus 1 at 300 Kelvin. And you'll notice that the temperature is very much in Kelvin there. We also have an activation energy of 111 kilojoules per mole. What is the rate constant at 273 Kelvin? Now, I'm just going to show you two ways to solve this problem, and what we'll see is it doesn't matter which way you do it, you will get the same answer. And so I'll start off by calling it uh, solution one. 
where we actually do it in two steps. In the first step, we would determine the frequency factor and then use this value to find the new rate constant. I don't care which way you solve this problem because, as we'll see, we will get the same answer. So in the first step, what will we do? We've got, uh, we've got this rearranged form of the Arrhenius equation where, and we'll call this, uh, we'll call this K1, where we make the frequency factor the subject of the equation and it looks something like this. And so we sub some numbers into that equation uh, and we've got P and obviously it's a few big numbers here. Whoa, Chris, what have you done? Now watch it guys. Notice that the energy in the question was given in kilojoules per mole. The value which I tend to use for R is 8.314 and the units for that are, as we saw on one of the earlier slides, I'll just go backwards a little bit, was this here. And you'll notice that the units are joules per kelvin per mole. So if we're going to use a molar gas constant which has joules, not kilojoules, then we must make sure that we convert kilojoules to joules in our actual equation. And if I go forwards, which way am I going, Chris? Come back this way. Ha ha, here we are. Therefore, instead of using 110 kilojoules per mole, I used 111,000 joules per mole. So just watch that. And anyway, sub the rest into this equation here. And you should get a value for A of 2.1. I'll give it to about four sig figs. I like to use... I like to have lots of sig figs when I'm, you know, midway through a calculation. Anyway, now that we have the frequency factor, we can move on to the second part of this question. And I'll just give myself a fresh little page here. So the question is asking, what is the rate constant at 273 Kelvin? So I'll call that K2, and I can now sub that into the Arrhenius equation, which looks something like this. And I'm going to call it at T2 because that's uh, my new temperature. And if I sub that into the equation, I take that frequency factor from that first calculation I did, and I multiply that by this term here. and the new temperature, which was 273 Kelvin. And if I sub that into my calculator, I'll get something, and look, I'll just give it to three sig figs for the time being. The question was really only two sig figs, but for the time being, I'll just give it to three sig figs so that we can do a comparison to the second technique. So that's solution number one. If we look at perhaps another way to approach this problem, Let's have a look at what we've got. There was a rearrangement of the equation that we did earlier in this video tutorial. We go back a couple of slides. Um, you know, you can use any of these. I think that probably this version down here in the lurid green box is probably a nice one. It's kind of convenient. It's boiled everything down. Um, so let's try using that one to solve this same problem. And I'll try and go forwards here somewhere. Okay, solution version two, use the form of the Arrhenius equation we manipulated earlier. And so, oh, still got this lurid green going on. So the natural log of K2 over K1 equals the negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant multiplied by one over T2 minus one over T1. So we've got all that information, and if we just manipulate that side for the minute, let's sub our numbers in. And we've got our temperatures that we've got from the question. And if we sub that in, then 
my calculator boils that down to a number which looks a little bit like that. So if the natural log, and there's a few different ways you could have done this question, but this is just one example. If that equals negative um, 4.4, I would kind of rearrange this, first of all, by perhaps taking, let's see, what could we do? We could take the exponential of both sides so that we end up getting that equals e to the minus 4.4. I could multiply both sides by k1, so we get to a point where k2 equals e to the minus 4.4 multiplied by k1, and that was 1 times 10 to the minus 10. And if we sub that into our calculator, if I'm not mistaken, we get something which looks a bit like this, which, if we go back in time, looks the same as the answer that we got using the other method. Okay, so there's more than one way to skin a cat here, guys. That's the Arrhenius equation. Um, it's an important one to know in kinetics because it really links this idea of the rate constant to the activation energy of the reaction. Well, that's all I've got for you guys in the way of video tutorials for the kinetics topic. Um, good luck, and I hope it all helped.